We have two problems with Australia's submarine fleet at the moment. Firstly, the Collins fleet is suffering from a sustained period of poor maintenance and low availability. And secondly, we're facing a future in which the Collins might go out of service before its replacement is ready. Even if we bought a submarine off the shelf, it can take 10 or more years before we would have half a dozen of them. And if we set out to build our own, it's useful to look at the Collins as a benchmark. The Collins project was first approved in 1982, and the first boat was in the water in 1996, 14 years later. The fleet wasn't available until 20 years after the approval of the project. So if we run forward 20 years from 2011, we're out in the 2030s, which tells us that given that the Collins submarine is supposed to retire around the mid-20s, that we're facing a real problem. We've probably left it too late to start work on a brand new submarine design with a blank sheet of paper now. So what we need to do is work out what we can do to have a submarine in time to replace the Collins in about the mid-2020s when the Collins runs out of steam. So we have two problems, one of which is fixing the Collins and the other is what we replace it with. What we're proposing in this paper is that those two problems actually have one solution. And that is you do the remedial work on the Collins. You do the engineering work required to fix the problem of, problems of the Collins. Now the Collins is a uh, system of systems and some of the problems have been sorted out. We had a lot of difficulty getting the combat system to work, but today that's a solved problem. The weapon systems and the sensor systems of the submarine are also in pretty good shape. What's causing problem is the drivetrain of the submarine, the diesel engines, the electric motor, the generators and the batteries. And all of those th things are causing problems and all of them have engineering solutions, but it's going to take time, it's going to take work, it's going to take money. And to put it bluntly, we don't have time to wait for all of those problems to be solved before we embark on the future submarine. So what we're proposing is that the future submarine could be an evolved Collins. You do the engineering work to fix the Collins, but by doing that work, you gain the knowledge, you prove the systems that can go into the future submarine. So that the future submarine is a Collins Mark II. It's an evolved Collins, and you do it sequentially. You might go through two or three intermediate steps, a Collins, the, the existing Collins being Mark I, a Collins Mark I-B, a Collins Mark I-C. Uh, you just do the work and as each system is ready, you build it into the boats and then you move on. This is the model the Japanese use to build their submarines. They prove the systems and they actually were in the situation where they were building two classes of submarines side by side, the last of the previous class and the first of the next class. But those two submarines had a lot of systems in common. So the degree of risk in building the new ones was actually quite low, and we think we could do something similar. Managing a project of this sort, which we estimate could be anywhere from $35, $40 billion, requires world-class expertise. This could be the biggest project that's ever been done in Australia. At the moment, it's being managed uh, through internal defence processes. And that's okay in terms of the very early conceptual stages. But once engineering work is required, you need people who have the experience of managing large complex projects and delivering large complex projects. And most importantly, you need people who've built submarines before. To get this project right, the government needs to go out to the world market and it needs to find people who have built submarines, who have managed large complex projects, and it needs to be prepared to pay to get them. These people won't be cheap, but they may be a very sound investment for what will be the largest military project we've ever done.